so the time has come for a map review. We're going to be reviewing Koth Clearcut. I believe it is the current map of the week over in RGL. Um, it's a relatively new map to people. Not a lot of people have uh, seen this map and gotten that familiar with it. Still a lot uh, of learning to do. That's fine. Even though it's been around for a couple seasons, uh, it's still pretty fresh. Still feels new to me, even though I've been playing it for a few seasons myself. So, what I'll do is just sort of give some general overview of the map, as well as some uh, maybe specific class tips. So, first thing I'll talk about here is that the spawn is actually quite large. So, if you're a demo man or a soldier jumping, you want to be careful not to jump too far. Because you'll lose your buff. Um, of course, on Koth, you usually don't actually need your soldiers to jump. Because you want to make sure they both get crit heals. It's pretty important. Yeah, there's a saw blade in spawn. That does kill you, so... Try to avoid that if possible. Um, but you spawn pretty pretty far away from it, so you shouldn't accidentally run into that. If anyone dies by that saw, uh, it's probably intentional. Um... So, let's talk about the rollout here. So, in my opinion, the main rollout is the best. Reason for that is mainly for vision. So, if you compare the vision that you have from here, out of main, to what you have coming up to the right, it's pretty significantly different. Um, here at main, you, you can see so much more. So, it gives you a little bit more options. Or, you... Um, Gives you a better, like, read of the situation, so you can pick your options better, basically. Um, but, if you're trying to be sneaky, if you're trying to be hidden, this right lane is pretty good. Um, especially, you know, if you want to go for a play in here, whatever. Um, this roof, very important, I'll talk about that. Um, some of this height is very important. So, you want to use everything, you don't want to, you don't want to put everyone, like, here, because this actually is kind of the lowest ground you could take on this approach so having all six people come this way not a great idea um, so I guess I'll just start with some soldier ideas so as a soldier this map can be kind of tough you got to be really really comfortable doing like these high bombs because that's what this map is going to be all about as a soldier um, all these walls you're going to be bombing off of constantly to like go behind and all this. Um, some of the best jumps that I like um, when I was playing Roamer on this map. Um, let me give myself some health. Our jumps off this tower. This tower is really nice for getting behind. Um... And you can use that to, to go deep. If you're if you're starting down here, you can jump off this and then off the tower and then go deep. If you avoid that, you can like curve around. Really good for cutting off people's exits and you gather up some health packs maybe, flank, you know, that kind of stuff. These jumps are going to be really crucial for soldiers. You're going to want to learn how to hit them consistently. Um, and uh, yeah, you're going to rely on that a lot. Because these roofs are so good... Another key point on this map is going to be roof control. So, your demo man should really be focusing the roofs. Because that will open up a lot of space for your soldiers. Because most of the time you're going to have a scout, or two even sometimes, on this roof. Just kind of overlooking the whole battlefield. They're going to be trying to chip shot at everyone down there. And they're going to try to control the airspace over the soldiers. So, if you're going to be bombing and there's someone on this roof, it's going to be pretty tough. You're going to want to look for... Um, you know, maybe some high bombs. Say they're on that roof over there. Definitely avoiding that side and coming off to the right. Or, um... If you dare bomb near them, you're gonna want to make sure you're super high in the skybox. If possible. Because then it's gonna be a lot harder for them to uh, do damage to you. So, that's, that's a lot of what the soldier's life is like on this map. Is just bombing super deep. Um, there are some decent spam, like, spots you might be able to hit, like... Um, for example, right here, if you're here, you can splash that, that sidewall. You can hit someone who's just like, just getting up on the, the roof. You might get some free damage off that. Um, you can get some pretty decent directs from this angle right here. 
I kind of like this one. Um, and if you jump, you can splash this as well. So, that one's decent. Um, inside these sheds can be pretty good for point spam. Because you do have decent cover. And you can spam a little bit from these angles. Fall back on this health and ammo. But, uh, otherwise... Unfortunately, Soldier is tough on this map, and you're going to rely a lot on those deep bombs and going behind and all that kind of stuff. Alright, I'm going to talk about Scout next. Let me just go back to the spawn. Go for Scout. <clears throat> so, as mentioned, the rooftops and all the height, really good as a, as a Scout. This is my favorite way to start. Just roll out through main. Your combo can go that way, but then as a scout, I'll just position myself up on this wall. You'll have really good vision of the whole mid, so you can see if people are crossing to the right, if people are on the roof, etc. And most importantly, this spot really denies soldiers if they try to bomb in. Because um, as I mentioned, a lot of soldiers are going to want to go behind. If you're right here, you're basically the goalie. This is like, imagine this is sort of like the goal. You know, the soldiers are trying to get through this gap. And you're just standing guard right here. Some soldiers may try to go jump over your head, but it's pretty easy to chase them down. And if you see soldiers jumping behind on the right, the rotation is so fast. And you approach from height, you can just kill them on this health pack. So it's such a good spot for denying soldiers. Um, I really recommend it early on mids as a scout. Um, similar being over here, but just a bit slower to rotate. A little bit less height, you know. Um, this is really good for just like getting info but this is probably the best spot other spots you can play early on the mid with similar results like right here you can keep everything in front of you for the most part but you're going to be pretty vulnerable to splash and you're giving up some of that height as well then of course you can get on this rooftop but you're going to be getting spammed a lot more another benefit of those spots back there is you're not as far forward to get spammed so you don't take as much damage if you're up here, you're likely going to be taking some stickies or pipes. So, um, something worth avoiding, I'd say, early on. But, uh, yeah, early on, you're just going to want to try and clean up the soldiers if possible. If you need to rotate back to kill them, do that, then push as a team, go forward. Um, <clears throat> outside of the mid, I, I usually will use this roof as an approach. It's really good for just initiating, getting uh, early info and some chip shots. You actually can do pretty good mid-range shots from here, like... In any of these locations, you can deal like a 50 damage shot. And a lot of weak players will dive down into this trench here. And they will um, be pretty easy to chase down. And then you can just quickly rotate back up. So, scout on this roof is great. It's probably one of the, the default positions. Even better as a scout is the forward roof, if possible. Your team has the point. Because then you can be putting out that pressure on them as they approach up the slope or out of the house. And it's really easy to fall back onto the other roof. So I would usually recommend having some early like positioning first, then rotating back. Similar to Viaduct, you can kind of dance around on the point like this, but... Uh, if you can get on the roof, I say might as well do it. This crate's pretty good. Um, outside of that, um, similar to Viaduct, I guess, even though this map has different symmetry than Viaduct, um, there is still sort of a f designated flank spot and designated combo, I would say. Usually this right side is more flank orientated. Um, so a lot of times if you see people pushing over here, it's more going to be on your flank to deal with because they're going to be the ones that are, uh, going to be going for those, those risks and, um, they can get behind really easily from over here. They have a little bit more health that's more accessible to them. So I'd say this side favors the flank a bit more. And as I mentioned with the soldier bombs, it can be really easy for a soldier to get in deep in that direction and then the scout to try to follow up here um but you should keep in mind that it's very difficult to chase 
um, with the rest of your team. Like, you're pretty isolated if you start going too deep. And one other thing I should mention about this map, the spawns are a bit um, slower on this map compared to Viaduct if you have the point. So, risks are a lot uh, riskier, I guess you could say, on this map. Um, if you feed and die and you don't get a trade, it can be pretty punishing. It's pretty difficult to... Um, yeah, hold some of these things without all your players up, and your spawn's gonna be longer, so you gotta keep that in mind. The distance is also greater. Oh, real quick, gotta, uh... Gotta acknowledge this one. Thanks, um... Internal for the 10. Keep playing the game, the king of all games, TF2. Yep. And you wanna see more on YouTube? There will be plenty on YouTube, trust. So, um... Including this review. But, uh... Yeah, not to get derailed too much. Um, <clears throat> those are sort of the scout basics. Another, you know, useful spot is this, uh, this tower. I call this the tower. You come around here, you can hit some pretty nice mid-range meat shots upward from here, and it's kind of a nice surprise, like, around the corner. Similar to what I was mentioning with, like, a soldier sort of playing this spot, this is one of the best spots for a scout to kind of, um, flank and surprise around this corner. Um, if you have people on this roof and they don't spot you, you can kind of blindside them up from here. It might even be worth sometimes to just hide in this position, wait for your team to get to mid, and then sort of bust here onto this roof. Coordinate with your demo spam and then just get a scout up there real quick. You can take over the enemy roof pretty quickly doing that. Um, so this is a nice spot for a, a flank play. Um... What else? As a scout, I wouldn't spend too much time in here. Just because you can get kind of isolated and it's really good to trap. Speaking of which, we'll talk about some demo man stuff for this map. Let's hop on over to demo man. So again, I, I recommend the, the main rollout. And then from here, you can do a quick jump over here. And then this location is pretty fast to see the point compared to jumping to this pack and then having to walk up this whole slope and seeing nothing and just like spamming a blind sticky over the top. Um, so I recommend this side. One other nice advantage of this left side as a demo early on a mid is that you have access to this left roof. So this roof is kind of the key to unlocking the mid for your team at any point in the match really on mids and when you're retaking and all that. You really want to make sure your demo is hitting people off the roof. So learn the timing of when people will be on that roof and uh, make sure that you uh, put at least one or two stickies up there to hit people off of it. It's going to be really important. Like if, 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 I, if I could stress one thing for Demo Man, it's get people off of this roof. It's going to help your team so much. Um, but this map is pretty good for demo. There's so many things you can trap around here. Um, you know, obviously, you can trap, like, this corner, you can trap this corner, this crate is a go-to trap, the back of this tower, basically every edge of the point you can put a trap on, so it, it can be really good to deny cap time, if you just spread out some traps in various spots, and, um, <clears throat> you know, the point's not too big that you can, you can reach pipes all the way to the back if you're kind of just at the, the edge of the cap, so... Uh, a demo will definitely want to just be tanked and sort of play mid-range here. Keep some traps up and spam, but of course, roof control. So, so important. Um, so, that's kind of like general mid stuff, I guess. We can talk about some like plays that you can do and some, some strats, perhaps. Um, since I'm already on demo, I'll mention some. This is an amazing spot to trap because you have so many options to trap and it's pretty difficult for the enemy team to see the traps and to clear them um, maybe that one's a bit easy you could move it like off to the side but you'll find so many picks if you just trap this because um, this is a really common spot for people to try to like dry push and start peeking um, you can deny their entire push with just a trap kill right there and since it's really easy for people to spot the other side um, you can rotate your spam even if you have that trap pretty, like, 
early. Um, this is a really common trap, you know, on these. These ones, I think, are... Uh, yeah, I mean, they're effective, but they're just really overused, I'd say, so. Most likely, people are going to catch on to them really fast. Some kind of sneaky traps would be inside this shed. You know, they, they think they're in safe, and they walk this way. Boom. Blow them up. Um, you know, sort of the, the edge of this little patio here. People bust out of there. So, some pretty good forward choke point traps you can do as a demo. Always want to make sure you have traps as far forward as possible. I think it's easier to trap the approach on this map compared to Viaduct. The only thing that's difficult is that soldiers will high bomb. They'll like jump out of here. You could potentially trap like this section here. But for the most part as a demo, you're not going to be able to deny the soldiers too much. You could maybe, you know, do some sneaky traps up on this tower. Um, soldiers might just jump right into your stickies if you put them up here. It could be kind of amusing. But for the most part, I would worry about the chokes as a demo and let your scouts that are on the roof um, worry about the soldiers. Once you, you know, debt these forward traps, you can, you know, lay another layer back here and should be pretty good. Um, if we're talking just in general, like a, a defense sort of position for your team, um, I really like, as I mentioned, having somewhat forward positions to get information and just slow them down a bit, give them a bit of damage, and then fall back if necessary. So maybe a scout and soldier forward on this roof, spotting left, spamming. Um, your demo can play sort of centralized here, ready to spam anything, ideally with, you know, at least a couple traps out. Um, and then your flank, you know, maybe ready to contest over here somewhere. They could maybe be spotting a little bit more aggressively like this. It's relatively safe. You have some pretty good sight lines here. Um, and then just, if it's not looking good, you can retreat. If you have an opening, you can push forward, that kind of stuff. And then your medic can usually be pretty safe, just kind of on the point, if you guys have the point. If you have to retreat, you know, then you start taking over your own roof. Kind of play back near this crate. And uh, your flank players, you know, maybe can be positioned on the left to surprise people on the roof. Or, you know, still on this roof, but ready to kind of pounce people on the right. So, it's pretty standard, I would say. Um, it is pretty important, though, that you have people kind of spread out to some extent. Um... Because if you're all just right here in the center, people will be flooding around the sides, and you guys are going to get overwhelmed pretty quickly. Um, <clears throat> so something I'll talk about next is forward hold. Um, forward hold is not great on this map. It's quite difficult to forward hold because the doorways are so massive. We haven't really been able to forward hold nearly as well on this map compared to Viaduct. Because, um, yeah, it's just hard to get information and they can rotate really fast between uh, these doorways. Like right here, for example. They could they could kind of fake you out by coming to main and then quickly rotating left. And this, this glass is one way. So they can see where you're positioned and they can maybe find an opening. They could bust someone through here. And once someone gets through somewhere, it's kind of all over. So the forward hold is difficult on this map. If I was going to attempt to forward hold, what I would do is I'd have one soldier here. I'd have one soldier sort of um, main. Maybe even like pushed up here to surprise people, shoot them in the back. Otherwise, just like um, on this crate, you know, spamming. Maybe not on the crate. I think a scout should be on the crate. The scout can dodge around more easily. Um, but the other soldier would be sort of, yeah, somewhere around here to hit main or to quickly spam left as well. Demo man would probably need to trap the right side. Um, but I wouldn't put the demo over here. Reason being, um, your spam won't reach into that left choke. So I would instead put the demo like here in the house. Because then his spam will reach everything. And then he can also quickly re-trap, you know, pretty much any of these chokes. 
if you're centralized as a demo you can trap everything and then your med should also probably be sort of near your demo here um, or you could have your med over on this slope but one problem with this position for a med is that um, it's easy to cut off your exit like if I if I'm a soldier and I get through this way and I see a medic on that slope I can easily bomb and cut off his exit right here so you have to be very careful especially if the enemy team is just gonna pop out through through um, their spawn they could cut you off which is why I prefer this central spot because it's a lot faster to get out and back to the point so um, if you ever are in like a forward position like this um, be very mindful of that right side flank coming in quickly if they break out of their spawn. Um, and I'd, of course, I'd only recommend trying any sort of forward hold if you're six up. And because um, the spawns, as I mentioned, are a lot worse for the defender on this map. Um, it's very, very hard to set up a forward hold in general because if you're down one, the chance of him spawning and crossing the entire map to get here are very low. So you won't see a lot of forward holds on this map. Uh, they're usually pretty easy to break out of anyways, and uh, if you're on offense, just go for a trade. You might even be able to get a snipe through, like, this choke or through this choke. The sniper sightlines are pretty good out of the spawn to break a uh, forward hold. Um, Alright. Next thing I'll talk about is Ubers. We will talk about some Ubers. Let me uh, go scout here real quick, because most Ubers are going to be with a scout in this, uh, this map, this game, you know. So, first we'll talk about approaching from the right. Approaching from the right can be decent. Um, I might use it if I'm trying to sort of dry push, because you have a lot of cover, so you can get in pretty far. Um, if I don't want to pop, I might come up the right side. You could come in through the shed and get in pretty far if you just pop around this corner. Um, with a scout and then go for maybe an exchange or whatever try to catch people um, similar out of main you can kind of scope it out but one thing you don't want to do is just linger around here with uber if you're just sitting here unless you have the point of course if you're sitting here and you have to cap and you have uber um, you're gonna be eating a lot of spam and you're sort of in the central location for their high bombs so I wouldn't want to linger here too much my actual favorite thing to do when I have Uber ad is to run this left side because you have a lot of cover. And then if you come up through this trench, look at how much further in you are when you pop compared to if you come out through your own shed. If you pop around this corner, you're literally like right in their face. Um, so this is actually how I prefer to Uber in if I have Uber ad. Um, you are going to have to, you know, make sure you clear the traps and you're going to have to make sure to avoid some spam, but. You got some pretty decent cover, and then if you just pop right here, you know, you're just right in their face. So this is my favorite way to get in really deep off of a Uber out of, um, you know, out of our spawn area and then with Uber ad. Or if you're just going for an exchange as well. If you're going for an exchange, this is really good too because um, they don't have as much room to milk. If you pop, like, approaching from back here, your Uber is basically done by the time you get here. And the chance of you retreating as well are slim to none. So that's why I think this is a, probably the best spot to go for an exchange. If possible. Um, let's see, what else? I've seen a strat where some people... Um, they actually sit in here with their Uber. Waiting for the enemy team to like approach on this slope. And then Uber out. Or you know maybe something like in here. And then Uber out. Personally, I'm not really a fan of that. If I'm on defense and I have Uber, um, I'd rather hold the Uber as long as possible. Um, depends on the situation, you know. Always the most important thing you can get during an Uber is the Medic on Koth. Because it's a, it's a timer-based game type. A Medic takes 40 seconds to build Uber if he's building optimally. So each Medic pick essentially delays their next effective push by 40 seconds. So... That's why medic picks are so much more valuable on Viaduct compared to other maps. Because they can only afford to lose their medic a certain number of times per round. <laughs> Mathematically. So, Ubers are really only useful and worth going for trades and all that kind of stuff. If you can pick the enemy medic. 
even picking their demo or a scout they're not as valuable just the medic that's that's really the most important one um so that's why i i would not often go for a risky uber aggressively on this map um not only is the retreat so difficult because the map is quite large um but it's pretty easy for them to just kite into spawn uh so yeah and then your spawns are also really bad if you mess up if you're on defense so usually i just hold the uber on the point whatever very common strat is this sitting your medic inside the shed so this strat is very effective and very hard to beat because the medic has so much cover like you can't bomb him when he's inside here they can just trap off you know this entrance and then all they have to worry about is this back entrance which is pretty small they just park a soldier here like he can stuff basically the whole doorway so when people are doing that strat um instead of just sending like a four-man sack five-man sack and just trying to get in on this guy you have to recognize what are they sacrificing by parking their medic in here and the most important thing that they're sacrificing is heals if their medic is inside the shed, anyone who's outside of the shed is not being healed. So what I would recommend you do is bring your heals actually a little bit further than you might normally on a sack wave. Um, you know, normally a team, if they're doing a sack wave, they might just bring their medic here and then he pieces out to spawn. But if you spot out that their enemy team is hiding in their shed, um, what you can do is actually bring your heals pretty far forward and just bully out the people that aren't in the shed even people that are on the roof are very very exposed because you get your demo to just spam them a couple, a couple times these picks might actually be worth going for instead of the medic so that's what i would recommend if you see someone going for the bunker you know strat inside the shed is just kill everyone who's not inside there you know if someone's on this roof focus them first you know two stickies and these people are like they're desperate for heals um, if you get six people to like retreat into the shed, you should have a pretty good chance of just like either capping the point or just spamming them really hard. If you are going to just commit with the the bomb and you want everyone to bomb, you have to have people trying to get in through the back. And don't just like walk in. If you're a soldier and you get around here, just try to rocket jump in here because you just want to get in the medic's face. That's really all that you're trying to do. If you have all five of your sack players trying to run through the center here, um, they're just gonna die. So you have to have people going over the roof and trying to get through the back soldiers and scouts You know, maybe even your demo could bomb back there But you got to be hitting them from both directions put as much pressure on them as possible um, Otherwise you could sort of slow push it. Oh You could slow push it have your demo just trap them in there Have people start baiting the cap as long as your medic is safe because most likely they're gonna pop out of here around the corner as long as they're not killing your medic, that's an effective force, you know? You're basically forcing them out of their hole and getting their uber popped and getting a bit of cap time maybe as well. It's not bad. So the one thing you just don't want to do is just have people one by one trying to run in here to get the force. You either focus people that aren't in the shed, make sure you have people, you know, bombing into the back, or take it slow and just, like, start edging the cap and bait them into traps and spam. And, uh, you know, maybe they drop players. Maybe you jump people behind. Um, you know, they are sacrificing some map control by being in here. Very important to uh, recognize that. I'm um, trying to think what else there is to, to say about this map. Um, I guess some, some other things maybe to keep in mind, things to attempt would be um, if, if you're on, um, you know, defense, you have the point. And you have like an early call that the enemy team is approaching up the slope. It can be pretty good to bomb them on the slope because they really don't have a lot of height. So they are kind of uh, vulnerable down here. Um, but your coordination needs to be on point. You need both your soldiers probably going for that. Um, just uh, yeah, it's something we've been able to do pretty successfully is just call for a, a double bomb onto them on the slope. Um, what else will you see on this map? Um, you'll see a lot of people trying to linger around here for arrows around these towers. So that can be a good cue for people that are on these rooftops to try to push a little bit more aggressively to clean people up. 
You're also going to see people like scavenging for these health packs and stuff. You don't want too many people down here, to be honest. For the most part, this is just like a flank route or that exchange route. Otherwise, this is kind of a no man's land because of the height uh, disparity. So don't don't put too many people down here. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? For clear cut. Sniper. It's not a great sniper map, actually. That's one of the things I like about it. Um, if your sniper is very agile, he actually can make the jump from this crate up to this wall. This is probably the best sniper angle he'll have. So you can see this entire roof and most of the point. So if they do get a sniper up here, it's pretty good, but it is a pretty precarious ledge. So with a little bit of spam and pressure, he'll kind of fall off here and then he'll have to spend another minute trying to actually hit this jump. He can sit here and snipe people on that roof. He can also come here and snipe people on the roof. Um, but I really haven't seen a lot of sniper on this map. There's just too much cover. Even from like here, like you'd think this would be a good sniper spot, but really you can only see the front of the point. You can't see much. Um, out of main, it's still fairly easy to avoid. You know, go behind the towers, in the shed, etc. So I wouldn't worry too much about sniper. Um, and I wouldn't rely on sniper too much on this map either. So... Yeah, that's, that is a relief for a lot of people because Viaduct is often very dominated by snipers. I'm trying to think what else, what else, what else, what else. Of course, as any, uh, you know, Koth map, um, people need to be getting health packs a lot. These health packs uh, back here, people need to be rotating back for these health packs all the time. Your soldiers and scouts, especially. Because um, you don't want your medic who is trying to, you know, push with your demo and, and scouts up towards the point to be constantly turning around for arrows. So people need to be a little bit um, self-sufficient for the health packs. You know, not too different from Viaduct. Um, and I think that that mostly covers it, to be honest. I mean, map has a couple intricacies and all that, but for the most part, if you know how to play Koth, then it should feel very similar. The only differences on this map compared to Viaduct would be, like I mentioned, Sniper's not as good. Soldiers kind of have to do these high bombs, otherwise they're going to struggle. And then also the, the Shed play with your Medic. That you won't really find on Viaduct. Actually, back in the day on uh, Viaduct, people used to do that, like around Season 8. That was like a TLR strat. But then they made the cap really fast, and so that became obsolete. So cap time is always a way to sort of counter them if they're hiding and i think that'll do it for the uh the map overview here of uh koth clear cut hopefully it helps hopefully some people uh are gonna find some value in it i guess i can give some quick like call outs that we use um we call this tower call this trench call this you know roof shed um, house, slope, main, um, bats, you know, pretty standard calls, should be, uh, pretty natural, and if all else fails, left, right, main always seems to work, so, yeah, that's cough clear cut for you. <laughs>